Hello guys, thanks for tuning in. My name is Vince and welcome back to my channel if you are a returning viewer or a subscriber. If you are new, welcome. This is my channel where I discuss everything related to the Supra. Um, if you guys can think of it, I probably made a video about it. So check out my channel and hopefully you guys enjoy. If I didn't discuss something that you guys are wondering about, leave a comment down below and let me know so I can make a video about it. But you're tuning into this video because it's been two years since I purchased this car. It still feels like yesterday. I really, really love it. And maybe, you know, you guys just bought, bought the Supra and you guys are wondering how it's like after two years of ownership, 41,000 miles, and then almost 48,000 miles on the chassis, how it's like, what the costs are, what the pros and cons are. So if that's what you're looking for. You tune into the right one. Uh, check out the bookmarks or the chapter links down below. So you guys can jump to those specific sections if that's what you're wondering about. But if not, let's go hop into it and let's discuss why I love this car so much and maybe those things why I don't like it so much. So before I go over the pros and cons of the ownership of this car, I wanna discuss first what was done to the car. I didn't buy brand new, I bought it used, secondhand, local to me up here in the Tulsa area in Oklahoma. So shout out to the 918 if you're tuning in from there. But this car had about 6,200 or 6,300 miles whenever I purchased it two years ago. And it had a downpipe, the exhaust, basically how it looked so it's got had the arrow kit this cusco strut bar um basic bolt-ons on a bm3 91 tune so what have i done to this car ever since i got it actually i forgot one last thing that forge catch can that you see right there that was also already installed on the vehicle so what was done to this ever since i purchased it i added port injection thousand cc injectors i changed the the tuning platform from bm3 over to ecutech and i would not look back it is running on full visconti flex fuel with the reflex kit i added the charge pipe a pure 800 turbo and then i also added the te37 wheels i added the build transmission can't forget about that then i also ceramic coated and paint corrected the car myself since I do detailing on the side. So if you guys wanna see that type of content, feel free to leave a comment down below. And then I added the IRX tint, which I absolutely recommend. And then I did the speaker mod that you guys have, might have heard on the Super Mark V forums, but it's been, uh, it's been awesome. So, Power level wise, whenever I first got it, it was around high mid 400s, I would say. Never really dynoed it. And then after I added the mods for like fueling, pure 800 turbo, blah, 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 build transmission, I'm a right around high 600, 700s, I would say, on E70. Tuned by the best Mikey body. So if you guys had this platform already, or if you guys are looking into it, definitely hit them up. Mikey84body at gmail.com. Let him know I sent you. And hey, he does great work. And I want to look back. So that was what, what was done to the car. Definitely still daily drivable, I would say, if that's what you guys are wondering. Still drives like a normal Supra. Not too rowdy until, of course, you definitely decide to punch it, which I definitely do because that's why I purchased this car. So you might be wondering how many miles I have on this car now. I have over 47,600 miles on it. I actually just changed the oil last night. And that puts me at 41,000 plus miles in my ownership in two years. So I definitely drive it. 
Uh, this is probably going to be one of the higher mileage or highest mileage supers that you will see, but definitely not the absolute highest. And some people in the forums or Facebook groups have like 70,000 and one guy has 100,000 miles. And if you're worrying about the reliability, it is very reliable. So I'm speaking on behalf of the 2020s. I know some of the 2021s, they have some oil burning issues, which I do discuss in one of my other videos, which I will link in the description down below. But if you guys keep up with the routine maintenance, the car will take great care of you. So haven't had one hiccup with this car at all, came from Subarus and had an FKA Type R before this. And yeah, this has been the best purchase still car wise that I've made to date. And yeah, I would stand by that until the end of time, unless I get offered a GT3 RS. So now that we've covered that, let's discuss what makes this car so awesome in my two years of ownership. So we're here at the front of the car. Pros, definitely, it's fast and fun. Uh, definitely puts a smile on my face. It's also a very reasonable car in terms of maintenance. So like I mentioned earlier, I mean, for me, it's been very, very reliable and there's plenty of owners out there with varying mods that can agree with me is that this car has been very reliable for them. If you keep up with the maintenance, oil changes, and you're not just absolutely beating on it, acting all stupid with a car, then it's gonna take great care of you. It's gonna be very, very rewarding. Personally, the most rewarding car for me to ever drive, and I've had an S2000, FKA Type R, multiple Subarus, and personally for me, this would take the cake out of all the cars that I've ever owned in terms of enjoyment. It's also very practical for my needs, so I don't have a family, um, I'm not married, so whatever I need to carry, definitely can fit in the back of that trunk. So if you guys haven't seen how the trunk looks like or how big it is, I will add some B-roll footage for you guys here so you can see how it looks like. But even still, I've been able to fit multiple people's luggage in there, myself and my passenger, as well as whatever else I need. Might be a little bit tight in there, but it is definitely doable. It is also reasonable with the miles per gallon. So they always say miles, miles per gallon, which I am completely down for. But even on E85, I still get mid to high 20 mile per gallon range. And then of course on pure gasoline, 91 or 93, I am able to get high 20s consistently and even mid to low 30 miles per gallons. So not that often that you can drive a car like this that does what it does, that can get that great gas mileage, especially for a daily driver. I guess you can kind of consider this as a pro, really depends on who you are, but the attention that it gets. Yeah, this thing gets a lot of attention, um, definitely love to talk about it with anybody especially the younger car enthusiasts because i was like that too you know dreaming of being able to purchase something like this and being able to do it letting them know that hey if i'm able to do this if you're watching this and you're you know younger than me i'm 30 right now you definitely can do it i'm not the smartest dude but thankfully my god dealt the right hand and i was able to purchase this so it is also very comfortable and very modern with the technology. So it comes with an Apple CarPlay. If you have, you're in the Android crew, I'm sorry, this doesn't have Android Auto, but it does have radar cruise control for the premium models if you're talking about 2020s, but I think on the 2021 pluses, I'm not 100% sure it became standard, but either way, very modern, very reliable. You get the heads up display for the 2020 and then certain A91 models, but if you get the chance to go for a 2020, go ahead and snag one up. They're going down in price as of the making this video because if you guys were keeping up with the car market previously, like during the COVID, well, post COVID, everything was just absolutely insane. So now they're going down in price. I would say it's a heck of a deal, but I'm a little bit biased. So those are the pros of this car. Um, I would definitely say even as, as I discuss the cons in the, you know, the section coming up here, it would definitely still be worth it for me. But anyways, 
you guys tuned in for the pros and cons, let's cover the cons of this car. All right, so to the nitty gritty of things, the cons of this car. So first con I can definitely think of, and depending on your use case and what you get, where you guys are at with life, it is definitely a small car, two doors, sports car. It is not the biggest, so the relative lack of space will probably be a big impact in your decision making if you were to daily drive this car. But if this is gonna be your weekend car, I can't imagine the lack of space would really worry you just because this car, that's not what the purpose of it is, but it is still definitely daily drivable. So just be aware of that. I never had the problem, but I know some of the taller folks who are watching this video or people who just haul a lot of stuff, you know, they'll probably complain about it, but you know, really depends on where you are at with life with that. This is kind of explains why I'm angling the camera like this. It is low, so this is the distance between the ground and the car. So depending on what kind of roads you're driving, this car is pretty low if you do add lowering springs. So I do have Eibach lowering springs on this car. Rides great. I have a couple of videos discussing how it rides. So if you guys have any uh, questions on that, definitely check out the video related to that in the link down below. But anyways, just be aware of its scraping. So this car has plenty of scrapes. This is a chassis mounted splitter kit from MFR Engineering. Highly recommended. I would not do a carbon lip or diffuser personally, just because, I mean, look how low this car is. And then here in Oklahoma, there's so many bumps, potholes, whatever kind <laughs> of crap is on the road. So um, I definitely wouldn't do that. The tires can get expensive if this is your first time owning a car like this. To put it in perspective, the cost of my tires, I'll put it in the screen here, how much it has cost me. So the Toyo Proxies TQs, which is the tires that I have in the rear, that cost me $652 before tax and shipping. I just actually ordered them from Amazon. My wheel and tire setup, if you guys like them, there's a video for that, so check it out. So $652. The front tires, whenever I had to replace them, I'm running Nitto NT555 G2s, which is an all season tire. Very, very good tire. That was $450, but those are just the cost for the tires. So if you're replacing your tires a lot, I mean, the rear ones probably more often than the fronts, then yeah, $650 plus, that is no <laughs> amount to scoff at. So just be aware of that whenever you guys are doing your homework. Uh, for me, thankfully I'm in the position to be able to afford that, those kind of costs so it doesn't bother me too much. But if you guys are going to this platform from something more affordable such as a Subaru, Honda, or any of those other brands, then just be aware of that. This is also mentioned in the pros, but depending on who you are, the attention that it gets. So I've had plenty of times been driving around just doing whatever I need to do and people have been swerving in and out of traffic just to get a look at this car. Don't get me wrong, I love it and I'm down to share it. But if you're endangering other people on the highway just to get a glimpse of this car, then um, yeah, just, just don't do it. Use your head, be smart, use your common sense, don't endanger other people on the highway. And then also maybe depending on what you're trying to do, you know, maybe you don't want to talk to everybody about your car um, every single second that you stop. But yeah, uh, that's something to definitely account for. The sensors everywhere. So just because this car is so modern and so advanced now, and I know a lot of other cars out there, and this is maybe why some of you guys watching this will enjoy your shit boxes, is because <laughs> it's not so complicated. With this car, <clears throat> whenever I changed the rear brake pads, which wasn't too expensive, I think it was like 30 or $40. I do all the work myself. But anyways, I didn't realize that there was the brake wear sensor. So whenever I pulled the brake sensor, wear sensor too hard, and then obviously it snapped. Thankfully on eBay, I was able to purchase a, one from a wrecked Supra for like $15. But just stuff like that, there's, I mean, 
in that shot where I was talking about the pros, there was a bunch of freaking wires. There's sensors for everything on this car. One of the dumb things as well is, I mean, just for the oil changes, it does not have a dipstick. So it is an electronic system. So you do have to have the car turned on and park in a level surface and then drive it around for a little bit to get an accurate oil measurement reading. So if that's not your thing, if you don't like that, then sorry, too bad, so sad. There's no other alternative. That's how this car does it. If you didn't do the speaker mod, and I'll link the speaker mod to what I'm, what I'm referring to in the description below. Basically what that is, is that if you have music or if you listen to music that is very bass heavy, or even where the mids are really powerful, there is not a way for the air or the sound waves to escape from the back of the car. So it just gets trapped there. And obviously what does that do? It's gonna make the panels just rattle around the car, primarily in that enclosure box where the subwoofers are. If you guys don't do that mod, then it's just gonna be super loud. It is very, very annoying. I, I, I don't know why Toyota hasn't done this from the factory like modified it. It doesn't matter if you have the JBL system or not. It's gonna do that for all of them. If you guys are gonna do this, highly recommend for you to do that. It takes maybe four or five hours to do. You'll need a drum on some tools. Um, the forum post is gonna be detailing what exactly you need and what the steps are. It's not, it, it, it is a must, I, I would say that. Last thing is that, I mean, this is kind of just creature comforts, especially for a car in this price range. It doesn't, it has heated seats, but it doesn't have cooled seats. It doesn't have a heated steering wheel. And then some of those more premium creature comforts are not available on the car. Even though I mentioned that it's great that it has radar cruise control. It has the, uh, you know, also mentioning the auto dimming mirrors, which is fantastic. It doesn't have those things. I really wish that it does because a lot of cheaper cars now than this car and even some of the other sports cars, I can't think of off the top of my head, they do have those features. So it's a, re it's a big bummer that, you know, Toyota didn't go ahead and add those to this car, but hey, whatever. Um, regardless of these cons, honestly, a lot of them, it's not a kind of like a catastrophic thing to worry about. So hopefully that does help with your guys' decision-making knowing the cons of this car. But personally for me, I still have this car, still very happy with it. I wanna regret any bit of it and it is definitely worth it for me. So now we're on the side of the car so you guys can bask in the sweet glory of these T37 Sagas. But to wrap everything up, hopefully you guys are still at this point and you guys enjoyed this content. Hopefully the pros and cons and those costs that I outlined um, helps your decision making. It is not honestly like a super expensive car to own and maintain. I mean, uh, like the oil changes, for example, you can buy, I'm running 5W40, sorry, 5W40 Rotella T6 from uh, Shell. You can actually buy that at Walmart for $26 per gallon. So of course I get two of those. And then each of the filters that you can literally buy from AutoZone, it is like $8. So I mean, just the oil changes if you do your own maintenance, it's, it's not that expensive. And then also with the spark plugs, I just replaced the full set and it cost me $120. And then brake pads, it's about $80 to $100 for just a standard set, not, not OEM. There's some um, low dust ones that you can purchase for $80. But outside of those, yeah, it's it's been a great card for me. I honestly can see this car staying with me until, I mean, forever. But other than that, I mean, this car takes all the boxes for me. Again, you know, it's fast and fun. It is modern. It is comfortable. It is reliable. Maintenance costs are insane. And it great, gets great MPGs. So, I mean... What more can you ask for? So if you guys are in the market, take it from me. Um, two years going strong. Plan on piling more miles on this car. Um, definitely consider it. If you guys get the chance to test drive it, I definitely recommend it. Check out some other videos here on YouTube. Check out my channel. I have a lot of other 
uh, videos detailing just information about this car, modifications, whatever, costs for the mods. So definitely check them out. Consider subscribing, leave a comment down below, and hopefully it does help in your decision.